I have the honor to bring up the next speaker, next artist, next performer. So please put your hands together and show your love to Michael M. Hotep. All right, get a DJ round of applause. All right, y'all a little slow on that, giving the DJ round of applause. Give him another round of applause. <laughs> he was here before I got here this morning. I got, I've been here since 9.45 a.m. He was here before me. All right, so, how's everybody enjoying themselves for Return to God's 2018? All right, so, I am Michael M. Hotel, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecture, and writer. And uh, this presentation is going to be uh, 20 minutes. I'm doing a one-hour lecture tomorrow here, but this is the intro to that. So this presentation is called Great African Women in History, Great African Women and Men in History, the Mothers and Fathers of Civilization. Uh, I did a four-hour lecture last year called Great African Women in History, the Mothers of Civilization. I deal with some well-known and not so well-known African women in our history. Today, I'm going to do just a 20-minute uh, presentation deal with women and men, but the two main inspirations for this presentation. Number one, uh, the film Black Panther that came out February 16, 2018, and the um, interest that it caused African Americans to have in understanding and learning about their history and culture, things like this. And then also the Charlottesville, Virginia attack of uh, August 12, 2017, okay, the attack in Charlottesville, which uh, this weekend celebrates that one, or commemorates that one year anniversary, all right? Also, be sure to go see the movie Black Klansman, Black Klansman from Spike Lee, because I saw it last Saturday in Detroit, and it deals with Charlottesville as well. All right, now, in this presentation, I may say some things that are outside the circumference of some people's awareness. Just because you never heard them before does not mean they're not true, just means you have to do some research to understand what I'm talking about, all right? And I've done uh, actually four presentations, four different lectures dealing with the film Black Panther. So after this, be sure to visit my vendor table outside. Just walk straight out the door, up the, straight back to that fence, just straight out the door, takes you to, African, to the African History Network. All right, so uh, how many people saw the film Black Panther? Okay, good, good. Excellent, excellent movie. I deal with it on a number of different levels. It's very deep on a number of different levels. So the film Black Panther is causing many African Americans to want to know their history and who they are, okay? There was a big interest in African American History Month, which used to be called Black History Month, uh, in February 2018, and many African Americans are doing DNA testing like from AfricanAncestry.com. That's basically the only one to use, AfricanAncestry.com. They don't sell your DNA. They're African American owned and operated, and not only can they tell you which region of Africa you're from, but they can also tell you which tribe, nation, high culture you're from, whether you're Hausa, whether you're Yoruba, things like this, whether you know, whether you're well off, etc. Okay? Alright, so uh, in, in, the, in the film, we saw them say, show them who you are, right? When we saw the ritual combat in T'Challa uh, doing the ritual combat to gain the throne. We saw them say, show them who you are. Well, before you can say, show them who you are, and, and before you can show them who you are, you have to know who you are. Ashe? Ashe. Y'all a little slow on that, Ashe. Ashe? Ashe. Before you can show them who you are, you have to know who you are. Is that correct or wrong? Ashe. Uh, absolutely. All right, now, here's one of my heroes, Malcolm X, asking a very simple question of who are you? Let's take a, let's listen to this. Who are you? You don't know. Don't tell me Negro. What were you before the white man named you a Negro? And where were you? And what did you have? What was yours? What language did you speak then? What was your name? It couldn't have been Smith or Jones or Butch or Powell. That wasn't your name. They don't have those kind of names where you and I came from. No, what was your name? And why don't you now know what your name was then? Where did it go? Where did you lose it? Who took it? And how did he take it? What tongue did you speak? How did the man take your tongue? Where is your history? How did the man wipe out your history? How did the man, what did the man do to make you as dumb as you are right now? All right, so give it up for Malcolm. Okay, what happened to our history? Okay, what did the man do to make us as dumb as we are right now? So the answer, the question of who are you, 
we get into understanding great African women and men in history, all right? Now, contrary to popular belief, unlike the 400th year ceremony commemoration that's going to take place last year, African people did not first come to this land we call the United States of America, August 20th, 1619, in Jamestown, Virginia. Even though that did happen, we were here for tens of thousands of years before that. How many people are familiar with Dr. David M. Hotel? Dr. David M. Hotel is a friend of mine. He wrote the book, The First Americans Were Africans, Documented Evidence. He's a friend of myself and Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kamene, one of my teachers back there. You see Professor Kaba in the Hidden Colors documentaries, and we're in the Black Friday documentaries together, as well as Elementary Genocide Part 3. So, Dr. David M. Hotel holds the world's first ever PhD in ancient African history. His book came out in 2011. His book deals with 13 different disciplines, thoroughly documenting an African presence in this country going back at least 51,700 years ago, found in Allendale County, South Carolina, discovered by Dr. Albert Goodyear, who just happens to be a white man, and he's not only just a white man, he's an archaeologist at the University of South Carolina. They found artifacts, architecture, campsites, carvings, Egyptian writings, footprints in lava, genetic M174D haploid groups dealing with DNA and genetics. That's the oxyribonucleic acid, DNA, linguistics, paintings, skulls, skeleton structures, and tools. His book has 713 footnotes. It's backed up by seven peer-reviewed articles, which is the height of academia, okay? So, and he has a new one coming out in the next month or two called The First Americans Were Africans Revisited. So this is the Khoisan. The Khoisan have the oldest DNA on the planet. Not only were they here in uh, Allendale County, South Carolina, at least 51,700 years ago, they were here before Native Americans came into existence. That's another conversation. See, what, the, what my approach to history and the transatlantic slave trade is different than some people because I don't deal with the last 400 or 500 years of history. I deal with at least the last 50,000 years of history. Let's continue. Now, not only were African people here before Native Americans, and we were here before anybody else was here. This was our land stolen from us. This is what we have to understand. I'm not saying the transatlantic slave trade did not happen. Yes, it did. But we were here for tens of thousands of years before it happened. But even if you look up the origin, the word American, if you look at what the word American really uh, originally meant, check out the Noah Webster Dictionary, 1828 edition. How many people are familiar with that? Noah Webster Dictionary, 1828 edition. It's online. You look up the word American, it clearly tells you that an American is a native of America. It originally, originally applied to the aboriginal or copper colored races found here by the Europeans. Well, wait a second. If American originally applied to the aboriginal or copper colored races found in the Americas by Europeans, that means that the original Americans were not Europeans. These are Europeans telling you that they're not the original Americans. The original Americans were Africans, the aboriginal copper color races, these are African people and Native Americans, okay? You can, don't take my word for this proper documentation, ends all conversation. You can go research this yourself. Webster Dictionary, 1828.com, look up the word America. All right, so we have Lucy, 3.2 million years old. Everybody all right? Y'all pretty quiet. I ain't gonna dance, but I'm gonna rock your mind. I guarantee you that. I probably already said some things that outside the circumference of your awareness. Usually my presentations are three and four hours long. Today is just, just 20 minutes uh, overview, the introduction to the presentation tomorrow. Okay, so we have Lucy, okay, who Europeans call Lucy. Her, she is uh, 3.2 million years old. She, uh, her species was Australopithecus afarensis. Okay, at the time in 1974, this was the oldest remains of a, of a uh, human. Okay, now this was an early species, and Dr. Yosef uh, uh, Ben Yakin said if she is an African woman, then she must have an African name. So he named her Dink Nesh, which means you are amazing. Okay, she got the name Lucy because the, the European, the white uh, archaeologists uh, that discovered her, they were listening to the song by the Beatles called Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. So they call her Lucy. Okay, but because of self determination, Kuji Chagalia, second principal of Kwanzaa, we, we gave her an African name, so her name is Dink Nesh. So here we have Offset, right? Who the Greeks called Isis. That's not what we called her, that's what the Greeks called her. Offset means she of throne. She, in, in the mythology, she was the first queen of Kemet. She was the wife of Osar, who the Greeks called Osiris. And she's the mother of Heru, who according to the mythology, born on December 25th of a virgin birth, hello, Born, here's the baby Heru right here, okay? And he was the first Kairos, or what Europeans called the Christ. Kairos, meaning the rising of the spirit. Ka, many spirit, rest, many to rise. 
And in the mythology, he's uh, a saw whose body is cut up into 14 pieces, 13 are recovered by Aset and her sister. And then you have the uh, Tekken, which is, represents the 14th piece, the phallus. And the Tekken is an ancient African symbol, which represents uh, transformation and resurrection. But it's also the Washington Monument, okay? You everybody know that, right? Y'all don't, y'all see, okay. Every, the, the Washington Monument is a Tekken. Why? You have to understand history. See, the founding fathers, or who Dr. Francis Cress Wilson called the Fondling Fathers, see, many of them were Freemasons. 50 of the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence were Freemasons. Okay, I got it somewhere in here. So they're taking symbols from ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt, and putting them in, and putting them in the layout of Washington, D.C. How many people are familiar with Tony Browder? Anthony Browder, Tony Browder? Yeah. Tony Browder wrote a book called Egypt on the Potomac. His book deals with how the layout of Washington, D.C. is a copy of ancient Kemet. Okay, they co-opted and stole our history and represented it as their own. All right, so we have our set. And then uh, here's another depiction of Aset with a throne on her head. Aset means she of throne, and she uh, is a, a, a netter, and plural is netteru, associated with love and fertility. We also have Ma'at, okay? Female winged deity or netter. She's the personification of truth, justice, righteousness, harmony, balance, order, and reciprocity. And we see the 42 laws of Ma'at are a precursor to the Ten Commandments, okay? See this, so we have to understand the chronology and history. And we have to understand where these things came from that were incorporated into Christianity. All right, so in the 1970s, when I was, because I'm older than I look, I guess. People tell me I look young, all right? Oh, by the way, didn't Herb Alchemist look very beautiful today on stage? Y'all all right? Okay, so tell I said so, because she beat me up last night because she said I didn't say she looked beautiful yesterday. Okay, so tell, tell her, everybody record this, and Michael Imhotep said you look beautiful yesterday and today, all right? When you see her, tell her that, okay? Because she got mad at me. All right, now, in the 1970s, when I was a kid, I would get up Saturday morning and watch Saturday morning cartoons. We ain't had a cartoon network, all that stuff, right? So Saturday morning at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I think she heard me, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right, they showed the Shazam and Isis hour. On TV, on CBS, I still have comic books to advertise. And they showed us this white woman who they said her name was Isis and she had superpowers she got from Egypt, but they ain't show you no Africans who were, who were Egyptians, okay? And we didn't understand that she was a copy of this African woman in the mythology here. This is where they got it from. This is the official DVD box cover of the complete series of the TV show, The Secrets of Isis. Last time I checked, it was on Hulu, the streaming service Hulu, because I went there and watched it. All right, and then from this, from the original, Offset and the, the baby Heru, and Offset gives birth on December 25th, a virgin birth. Then we get the black Madonna and child that was worshiped all throughout Europe by Europeans, okay? Because we see that the Moors are going into Europe civilizing and educating Europeans, okay? All that came to kick us in the behind, but that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother topic. Then we go from the black Madonna child to the decolorized version. But we gotta understand where it came from, all right? And here we have a famous bronze, bronze statue of Heru with the falcon's head, Asar, and then Offset. All right, now in the film Black Panther and in the, in the Marvel comic universe, we know that T'Challa is based probably the richest man in, in the world. Well, when we look at the richest man in history, who was that? Did somebody say Lex Luger? Lex Luger, who's the richest man in the world in the history? It was Master Musa. He just happened to be an African man. That's not just me saying it, that's the History Channel saying it. In the vast fictional universe of Marvel Comics, the child of better known as Black Panther is not only king of Wakanda, he's also the richest superhero of them all. And although today's fight for the title of wealthiest person alive involves a tug of war between billionaire CEOs, the wealthiest person in history, Mansa Musa, has more in common with Marvel's first black superhero. Mansa Musa became ruler of the Mali Empire in 1312 AD, taking the throne after his predecessor, Abu Bakr II, for whom he'd served as deputy, went missing on a voyage he took by sea to find the edge of the Atlantic Ocean. 
Mansa Musa's rule came at a time when European nations were struggling due to raging civil wars, raging civil wars and lack of resources. They were still in the Dark Ages. It's the teachings from the Moors that are going to bring Europe out of the Dark Ages and save Europe. During that period, the Mali Empire flourished thanks to ample natural resources like gold and silver. Now, this is the article from History.com. Anybody ever read History.com? That's the official website of the History Channel. You listen to my radio show, everybody got one of the flyers that came around? It has my information on there, and the information at the bottom of my radio show, the African History Network show, Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation out of Detroit. If you go to my website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, we have almost 900 audio podcasts of the show. Read this article. March 19, 2018, this 14th century African emperor remains the richest person in history. Then we have Queen Sophia Charlotte. Now this plays right into this weekend. What's taking place in Washington, D.C., where you got the white supremacists rallying, commemorating the one-year anniversary of the attack in Charlottesville, Virginia. You remember the white supremacists rally took place in Charlottesville, Virginia, August 12, 2017, and the uh, white woman, Heather Hare, was killed. Y'all remember that? Okay. What people don't know is that the city they were in, Charlottesville, Virginia, is named after this African woman. You got white supremacists in a city who are trying to save a Confederate statue of General Robert E. Lee, and when you study the history of General Robert E. Lee, which I have, he was against Confederate statues and against Confederate monuments. The white supremacists are waving a flag, they call it Confederate flag. But if you study the history of the Confederate States of America, what year was the Civil War fought? When did it start and when did it end? Don't speak, Professor Cobble. Who can tell me when the Civil War started and when did it end? Who can tell me? Don't tell me the date, just tell me the year. When did it start when did it end? This is one of the reasons why we can't get reparations. We don't understand our history. This is not an attack, but I'm trying to teach you something. So 1861 to 1865, the Civil War is fought. There were three flags that flew over the Confederate States of America. The flag that the white supremacists are waving Calling the Confederate flag never flew over the state, the, the uh, Confederate States of America. They don't even understand the history that they're claiming is their history. How many people watch the Dukes of Hazzard TV show? Go and look, Duke. Just some good old boys, never meaning no harm. Beat all they ever saw, get in trouble with the law since the day they were born. Don't act like you never watched Go and look, Duke. Okay, now you remember the flag on top of the car? Y'all all right? Is this my car? Can y'all hear me? Y'all remember? Do I need to come out here? Okay, y'all remember the flag on top of the car, right? What was the name of the car? What was the name of the car? General Lee. Who was the car named after? General Robert E. Lee. The car on the TV show The Dukes of Hazzard is named after a white supremacist slave owner who took up arms against the U.S. and committed treason. That's who the car is named after. And we sat up there and watched them. Now, how the hell I get back up here? All right, let's see. All right, let's do this. Okay. So you gotta understand this history. All this, a people's history and culture teaches them how to deal with the problems of the past in the present and the future to meet the needs of the community. So who was Queen Charlotte? Who was Queen Sophia Charlotte? All right, she was the wife of King George III. King George III was the king of, of Great Britain. This is who the 13 colonies were fighting against when they separated during the um, American Revolutionary War, 1775 to 1783. She was of African descent, direct descendant from a black branch of the Portuguese royal family, Alfonso III and his concubine, Oruana, who was a black Moor. This was, her an this was her ancestry. But check this out, it gets deeper. Not only did she rule over Great Britain, Ireland, and America, one of her daughters, Alexandra Victoria, became known as Queen Victoria the First. Okay? A group of colonizers. Now, what's interesting, now this is a, a famous painting of her in 1762. The older the painting, the darker and more African she looks. It's not because it's dirty, it's because she was of African descent. With the rise of European powers, the rise of the European phenotype, the rise of white supremacy, they started painting her to look more white. Now check this out. So back May 19th, when you had Meghan Markle, who married this colonizer now, named Prince Harry, right? I'm not calling him a colonizer because he's white, I'm calling him a colonizer because he's from a family of colonizers. You ever study British history? A hundred years ago, do you understand, one-fifth of the world was under British rule? She married it to a family of colonizers. Now, the, it, there's a whole lot of problems here. One, she doesn't even identify with being black and African-American. She identifies with being biracial. This is not an attack on anybody biracial, but I'm just saying. Number two, I never saw so many African-Americans teary-eyed and happy to see a sister marry a colonizer. 
May 19th. May 19th was not only Queen Charlotte, Queen Sophia Charlotte's birthday, May 19th was also Mark, uh, uh, Malcolm X's birthday. Okay? Now, she, but so people were happy and they said, oh, she's gonna become uh, a princess. She ain't a princess? Two, three minutes? Okay. All right, that's 30 minutes CP time. No, just three minutes. All right. She, she uh, is not gonna become a princess. She is six in line. Prince Henry, Harry is six in line for the throne. She's the Duchess of Sussex. So she's not even a princess. But well, we don't understand our history. You don't need another uh, uh, black queen of uh, England. You already have one, if you just need one. Now, what's interesting is we talk about this sister here. Now, this is Ariana Austin. She's an African-American woman who married uh, Joel Mapunen, who is the great-grandson of Haile Selassie, the last emperor of Ethiopia, and she's actually a princess. So we uh, rejoice over Meghan Markle, who doesn't identify with being, being black, Marrying a colonizer, but then talk about this. This took place September 9th, 2017. How many people knew about this? So, so it's a good thing you came today. All right, so then we have uh, what took place at the uh, Charlottesville, Virginia last year. And this weekend is the uh, one year anniversary of this, all right? And for more information, check out this article, landblackstar.com. Meet Sophia Charlotte, the first black queen in England and five things to know about Queen uh, Charlotte, smithsoniamag.com. We got Hannibal Barker. One of the greatest military strategists in the world, if not the greatest, ain't just me saying it. That's 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 white military strategists, white generals. The Battle of Cana, 216 BC, when Hannibal defeats Rome, he crosses over the Alps with the elephants. He defeats Rome. He has 50,000 uh, troops, and he defeats the Romans. He defeats the Romans that have 80,000 troops. Okay, check this out from. Uh, at AtlantaBlackStar.com, History Channel portrays Hannibal as black. White people cry foul over historical revisionism. Because the History Channel had a series called Barbarians Rising. Barbarians Rising, I watched it. This brother did an excellent job portraying Hannibal Barker. Some white people lost their mind on social media because they said Hannibal was uh, white, okay? But it's not true. So then we have the Moors who go into, who go into the Iberian Peninsula, the day known as Spain, Spain and Portugal, 711 AD. And you got the uh, general Tariq, Tariq Ibn Ziyad, right? And then they named, they named the mountain Jebel Tariq, which means Tariq's mountain. We call it the Rock of Gibraltar. That's who it's named after, Tariq Ibn Ziyad. And the, and the teachings the Moors taken in Europe from ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt, are going to save you or bring you up out of the Dark Ages. And when we look at Freemasonry, all this stuff, the foundation comes out of ancient Kemet. We got Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, who I knew and interviewed three times. We also had Nilly Fuller, who taught us if you do not understand European white supremacy and racism, what it is and how it works, everything else you think you understand will totally confuse us. Stephen Biko, uh, Bantu Stephen Biko, one of our great South African freedom fighters, who taught us the most potent weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. We got to take our minds back. Okay? With African history and culture, it's the foundation. It gives you your VIPs, your values, your interests, and your principles. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who was totally misunderstood, one of, one of the most misunderstood leaders we ever had, just like Malcolm X. Dr. King wasn't a punk, he gave his life for our people. All right, Dr. King, April 3rd, 1968, his last speech, I've been to the mountaintop, and most of our people don't understand. He said, we have to always anchor our external action with the power of economic withdrawal. So when you got mass protests, you gotta have targeted, sustained economic withdrawal strategies to go along with this. Dr. Leonard Jeffers, Professor James Small, two of my teachers, they teach you about the pyramid principle. Your foundation is African history and culture. It gives you your VIPs, your values, your interests, and your principles. It doesn't matter how much money you have. We got a $1.3 trillion economy, 97% spent with other people that don't look like us because the foundation is not in place. We have to take our minds back. It controls your economic empowerment and political empowerment. We'll talk about that tomorrow. We've got to have a synthesis. I'll skip over Ryan Coogler, but just keep in mind, the Pan-African flag is represented in the colors that they're wearing in the Hong Kong scene in, in uh, Black Panther. I'll show you tomorrow when Ryan Coogler breaks it down. Then that takes us right into Marcus Garvey, Universal Negro Improvement Association, August 13, 1920, when they adopted the Pan-African flag. When I do my presentation on Black Panther for children, I showed them this. I was speaking in Detroit at the Museum of African American History, the 5th through 12th graders. Only a handful of them, uh, most of them knew about George Washington, only about five knew about Marcus Garvey. That's a shame, okay? So Malcolm X, one of our uh, great leaders, he said, education is our passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. I'll leave you with this. 
Wakanda forever. Wakanda's salute comes straight out of ancient Kemet. It is not left over right, it is right over left. That comes from the Nisubiti, who the Asians call pharaohs. And you see this all around the world. That's a symbol uh, when they're dead, it's a symbol of royalty also. So Mod Hotel, uh, Santi Sana, thanks for your attention. Wakanda forever. Tomorrow, I'm doing a one-hour presentation. So after we get metaphysically inclined, after we get full, then what do we do next? So I got an action plan. Lessons from the film Black Panther, Economic Guerrilla Warfare, Political Self-Defense, and How to Wakanda the Vote. That's tomorrow. And uh, just walk straight out there, to, uh, straight back to the fence. My vendor table's there. All of my DVD lectures are there. Help support the African History Network. My hotel, peace, thank you.